Alrighty, what's up, YouTube? Um, this is Ryan. Uh, so I'm back in the United States right now. And I just put together this vid of all my Snapchats and pictures um, from the O-Trek. Um, it's an 80-mile trek. I did it in eight days, seven nights. Um, and throughout, I'll just have videos uh, throughout of me right now describing what it was like. Um, and this is for basically my friends, um, so there's a lot of humor in it that some of you guys won't get, and I didn't expect to put it on YouTube, but I figured, like, it'd be helpful for some people who want to do the trek and haven't, uh, and need, like, an extensive review of it, um, so I'll put a pack list in the bio, and yeah, again, just, uh, I'll do an FAQ at the end of things that I wish I knew, um, before, uh, doing the trek, but yeah, thanks. One last thing, um, I swear a lot in this. I say the F and I swear a lot. I don't know, I didn't know how much I swore, I promise. Um, so I just ask you guys to excuse that. My dad told me not to publish this <laughs> because future employers could be looking at it. Um, so message to future employers. If you're looking at this, uh, thank you for doing your due diligence um, in the hiring process. Uh, and I feel like this just shows my passion for traveling and being a more uh, cultured employee makes me more valuable. Um, just a thought. Oh yeah, so this is day one. I have a bunch of pictures. I don't really have any video. Um, but basically I got on the trail at noon. Um, I met some s two Swiss guys, uh, Tony and Andy, and we did the first day together. It took us like three hours. Um, the start, you go up like a little like hill and then you kind of ride a ridge over a valley and then you go into the valley at the end. Um, it takes people anywhere from three to four hours to get to Saron. Um, I didn't bring trekking poles, but if I, I definitely would have brought them if I knew that there'd be a lot of rivers to cross cause, um, my shoes aren't waterproof and it's really hard to cross some of these rivers. Um, and trekking poles makes it easier. Um, but just at the end, I have some videos. I got a little tent tour. Um, you guys can skip that, but some of my friends might want to see it. But yeah, basically, that's pretty much it. Super easy first day. So we got a room tour right here of the tent MTV Cribs. This will start with the Corner of Enlightenment. That's where the book is. That's where the flashlight is. Corner of Enlightenment. We got the sleeping comments right here. We got the drying corner. We got the drying rack. Then we got the miscellaneous corner where just threw everything that didn't fit in those other places over there. Then we got the exit, the door. We sleep it good. We don't sleep in bed. Okay, so this next part is me sleeping in the sleeping bag naked. I just wanted to provide some context. Um, I started doing that on this trip because I heard, like, that's how you're supposed to sleep in a sleeping bag because the bag supposedly traps your own body heat. Um, and I also found out by sleeping in it naked that when you wake up, you don't wake up sweaty because you were so hot in the bag. It's like a cool refreshness. That's not a word. So when you get out, you're not cold because of the cold. You're already wet. So this is a really cool technique. I just want to provide some context because without that, it'd look weird. Look at this, baby. Show my little ankle. Let's go, baby. 
Okay, so this was day two, an easy day, um, relatively speaking. Um, at the start, you go up a ridge, and then you kind of ride the ridge. You kind of go over this little, like, mini pass thing, and you kind of ride the ridge along this lake, um, and then you enter a valley. Um, and in the middle, there's a checkpoint with a ranger station, and he's making sure to make sure you either have papers for Los Peros um, or Dixon. Um, so make sure you have those on you. Um, and then of course, progressively throughout the, oh, you have to check in and just, uh, like put your name and occupation, right? Right. One rule. Um, but yeah, beautiful day. I have some pictures and a lot of log footage from that day. Okay. Um, day two, 45 minutes into into the hike. Feeling good, you know. Had a nice oatmeal banana peanut butter breakfast. A little too nice, honestly, if I'm telling the truth. Um, yeah, I had a good dinner last night. Rice and Italian sausage with some veggies. Cool people. Fuck ton of Germans and Swiss people here, though. Which I'll fuck with, but that's dope. But look where I am. God is great. See? Okay. We're at the one hour mark. We're listening to some Usher. Just went up a fairly big ridge. But look where I'm at right now. This isn't your father's Patagonia, bro. Dare I say, a ramen bomb tonight. Woo! Woo! Be careful there, Ryan. I'm sorry, I'm spamming the TL. You don't got anything better on the TL right now to look at. Are you living? Or are you surviving? You gotta start living, baby. You gotta do this shit. So, look where we are. Came from over there, about eight miles in. I think it's 12 today, so three fourths. Let's go, baby. Hey, man. Could you climb that? Okay, so I'm gonna let you guys enjoy it so you don't have to look at my ugly ass face. Nah. Uh, who, the serious question. Who would average more yards per carry? with a minimum of 100 rushes during an NFL season, your average crackhead or Eddie Lacy? Serious question, bro. I want to know. Eddie Lacy or your average crackhead? I guess we'll never know, but fuck. That's been, that's been on my mind for a while now. But yeah.
This is day three. I stayed at Dixon. Um, met some great people there. Had a good time. It's a be that was my favorite campsite um, on the trek. Um, I stayed at Refugio there, and I went from there to Los Perros. Took me like two hours, 40 minutes. It's not bad at all, but this is where you start going up into the mountains a little bit. Um, so I think it's like 500 feet elevation gain. Um, but then you arrive at Los Perros. I didn't film much from this day. Took a couple photos, took one video, um, so enjoy. Day three, baby, we a couple hours in. Day two, I was in a refugio, had some mac and cheese, horrible, horrible by the way. Fucked up the milk ratio, only made a certain amount of dehydrated milk. Fucked it up, that's on me. But day three, a couple hours in, today's a short day, only like seven miles. And I think I'm five into it right now, but the last two are all uphill, supposedly. So I don't know. But yeah. Ramen bomb season, baby. Yeah, you have to pull it Um, so night three and day four, night three was at Los Perros, thoroughly enjoyed that night, one of the most isolated campsites out there. We played soccer there, um, and there's a hike, it's like two and a half miles one way, so I think it's five miles total, that's right near the campground, so if you get there early, you can do it. I think it was closed when we went there, um, but day four was past day. Um, for me, it wasn't as hard as other people, um, and please excuse my language in these clips. Also, I kind of look like a a hole, but I'm just having fun with it. Um, and way down was harder for me. Like going down the pass, you go down really quickly and it's super hard on your knees, especially when you're working other muscles going on the way up. Um, and yeah, I mean, once you get to gray, there's a lot more people on the O track and it's just not as good. And then the bridges, the bridges were cool as well. Um, but then gray glacier, you kind of ride the side and you can see gray glacier and it's huge. It's awesome. So I dropped my phone in the mud. Day four, by the way. Cracked my phone screen. Only a little bit, but. And then I got this to go up. It's past day, baby, past day. Past day. Past day, baby. Not because we're going up through a pass, but because we passing fools. I'm going to give myself this trail name. Usually with trail names, you got to, has to be gifted to you. Nah, gifted myself. Ryan Pace Setter Morris. Because that's what we do. Who's man? What it do, baby? So there's a glacier down there. You can't see it because there's um, fog, but we coming down the mountain. Look at this. Look at this. That train ain't gonna be here in 20 years, I can tell you that.
Okay. Fuck. That's sweat. That's sweat. That's not rain. Took me three hours to get to Paso. I'm dead though. Nah. Look at this place though. There's no ranger here. My apocalypse. not easy. The boogers are coming out. But look where I am. Come on, God. Put that paintbrush down. Just calm down. You made too pretty of an earth. Guess what the view... Five and a half hours today. Los Perros to Gray. Bro, this is a straight lodge. Yeah, like the Yellowstone Club type shit. I'm telling you, I'm straight big balling out here. We're just chilling. We're chilling in the lodge. The brewski. So that was day four. That was probably the hardest day. That was past day. Takes It says on the map it takes people 11 hours. I didn't come across anybody that said it took them that long. It took me five and a half, but I was just balls to the wall going straight to the objective, which was gray. Um, on night four, I stayed in a refugio at the lodge over there. It was really nice. Um, that's probably the nicest one they have, um, besides Pine Grande or, of course, Central. Um, but as you can see, one of the pictures was of, like, our group. That's one thing I really love about the trails, the camaraderie. At the end of the day, you see everybody and you catch up. You ask how the day was. Um, and then day five, which you're about to see, I had, like, blisters starting this day. The shoes that I or I've had for a long time, since like freshman year of high school. Um, so it took me a couple hours to get to Pine Grande from there, but I started early, um, and a lot of my friends were leaving also because they were hitting the ferry at Pine Grande. But yeah. Okay, day five. Short day today. Something like eight miles, I don't know. So there's three and a half hours on the on the map. So I got fucking hammered last night at the refugio. God damn. Um, so I'm a little not 100%, but I wasn't 100% before that. So I ain't lose much. But still, fuck. Feet hurt, but you know, one of my feet don't hurt. So, I mean, it's all relative right now. Just got to keep on going. Set up camp. Trail's muddy as fuck. So, that's not good. I'm on the W track now, so I'm on, like, the the busy portion of it. I was saying, I'm on the W track, so there's a bunch of day hikers and shit. Um, fuck, yeah, I mean basically it there's gonna be a lot more people out of left right and early yeah i mean we chill and there's a forest fire here like a decade ago so the trees are still growing back they closed down the whole park they said so that sucks but it is what it is less underbrush to burn for the next one yes peace out
We're in a beautiful place right now. Almost a Pine Grande. Today is not as bad as I thought. I didn't even think it was that bad, but yeah, doing well. Feet are doing well. Everything's going well. Yeah. Peace. End of day five. We're into the hiking part of day five. I think it was seven miles from Gray to Pine Grande. Did that in two hours, 40 minutes. Rewarding myself. I did all the the O part of the trek. Now all I've left to do is the W. And guess what we eaten? Peanut butter quesadillas. <laughs> That's just how we do, you know? It's just so fucking good. No, it's actually low-key fire. Only thing better than a ramen bomb, I'd say. Mmm. Dr. Ryan. So starting day two, or sorry, day six, um, yeah, I mean, we're gonna go to the campsite, set up camp, and then do a day hike to a mirador, so the, the camp's not even that far, it's just a two and a half hour hike, it said, um, I'm in good condition. Had to throw away a ramen because it broke, but the shops so will probably get something at the very end. But I'll live. We good. Peace. Okay, so that was day six. Um, kind of the blister pan started to fade away. I started becoming accustomed to it. Um, and it wasn't that bad. I put on moleskin. And I felt relatively good. Hiking wasn't that bad. Went out, went up without my pack to the Mirador, so it wasn't hard. Met a Chilean family. Talked with them. Got to know them over the next 48 hours pretty well. Um, then talked to Jan and Christian, two of my friends. Christian's the, the dude in the red bandana that you'll probably see. Or I already saw. But day six wasn't hard. I don't think it was that hard. And it was beautiful. I loved it. Um, kind of a distinct uh, topography or uh, uh, just area. and uh, Very beautiful. Okay, so ya llegamos al final. Día completo del viaje. Hey, Sendero. Um, we're on day seven. Tomorrow's the last day, but this is the last, like, full day where I'm staying the night. It's a Friday. It's beyond this. 
So Friday flop day, baby. We got 13 kilometers, and that's like nine miles, and we're gonna do it in these flops. Cause it's sick. Hello. Oh yeah. Hello. 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 Um, but bro, Friday flop day. We're finishing the trek with a bang. Bang bang. So first, a cost benefit breakdown with flops. Well, the benefit, I'm just flexing fools. Like, imagine you're just trying to trail, doing a day hike, you brought boots, you brought all this, the whole nine yards for the outdoors. And you see some dude on day seven with his eight day backpacking trip on flops. Bro, I get off the, I call search and ask you to come get me. Cause I don't deserve to be on the trail with that mofo. That's the first benefit. Secondly, it I was getting blisters in some places, my feet, and those places have no pressure on them right now because the shoe is only covering half the foot. Definitely a cost is this. The river, I went up like a half waterfall on these bad boys and they got soaked. But, but I went up a half waterfall. Like I'm already slipping right now out of these because they got wet. But you just put them in four-wheel drive and you're good. But still, fuck. Yeah, I'm going to need to take a little bit more breaks today to dry off the feet. Since it didn't rain a lot the past couple of days, I thought the trail would be dry. But I guess since we're in Patagonia, it's all wet. I'm still making good time in these, though, which I'm happy about. I'm taking my time today, also. I'm in no hurry. So it was six and a half hours the hike, so shouldn't be that bad. I'll probably get a little under it, just because I generally cut times here. E. This is what Doritos and uh, Pringles pasta looks like. Fine dining. Okay, so day seven here, I switched to flip-flops um, for the reason that reasons I give there. My feet, I just need some, fr they need some freedom. They need some uh, some air, no pressure. Um, so I switched to it and I wear flip-flops all the time off the trail. So when it came to being on the trail, it was like walking with a second layer of skin. It wasn't hard. Um, and yeah i mean last day you just ride along a lake super easy we got to central and it felt like the trail was done which for the majority it was all i had to do was the the towers hike on day eight but we kind of celebrated had some beers but the funny thing is for dinner i my seventh night of dinner my ramen that i brought broke so i didn't have it so i had to buy pasta at the little shack there but they didn't have sauce so we got water and nachos and Pringles and made us some. So it was just like kind of celebrating um, finishing the trek per se. Um, and yeah, I mean, my body is still feeling good um, and just went to bed relatively early so that on day eight, I had to get up early and do the towers hike. Okay, day eight, baby. We're doing the Mirador hike. It's still flip flops. Flop gang, don't stop. We're almost here. I absolutely, I'm, again, we, I was passing a lot of people, and I could hear like whispers behind me, like, oh, bro, that dude's in flops, like shit like that. Uh, what the fuck is this shit? 45 minutes. doing like the mirror door shit it's like the shit you see uh i'm fucking that geo bro i'm going that shit that's me i'm about that shit i got it on my back tatted bro
So the very last thing I'll address is food. Um, so I didn't buy any food on the trail. Um, I packed all of it in. And pack, of course, packed the trash out. But there were, like, trash cans in the first couple campsites and then also the last couple. So um, you don't have to pack all your trash out. There's going to be some campsites where you can throw it away, some places where you can't. Um, so I had seven nights worth of food. I had four uh, things of ramen, um, a couple things of, like, salami or Italian sausage. Um, I made my own trail mix. I brought, like, energy bars. Um, I brought bananas. I brought a kilo of peanut butter, which was critical. I brought oatmeal. I brought rice, like a little, like, rice roni thing. It's not rice roni, but something like that. With flavored stuff. A lot of salami, though, and sausage. That's basically it. Um, so I actually just found my list. So I brought Snickers, a mac and cheese, um, dried mangoes. Uh, no, not that. Tortillas, crackers, that was nice. Tea. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's basically it. Um, when my ramens broke, like, it cracked. So I didn't have, uh, oh, dehydrated mashed potatoes. Or, uh, the easy, the, like, the mix. Um, the use of dehydrated milk. Um, one of my ramens broke, so the last night I didn't have dinner. And so I just bought pasta, but I couldn't buy sauce because there was no sauce there. So me and, like, this Chilean family, we just got, like, Doritos and water. We just mixed and made our own sauce. Look, I mean, desperate uh, times call for desperate measures, am I right? Okay, so if you're still with me, I appreciate it. Um, I apologize for such a poorly edited vlog. Um, and with such foul language, I realize I didn't, I don't realize I swear as much as I do. And I watch the videos and I'm like, wow. Um, so I apologize for that. Um, yeah, I mean, it was a great trek. Uh, 80 miles, eight days, fantastic people, beautiful weather. Especially, I got off the trail right as the corona got really bad. Um, and so my study abroad program in Santiago was canceled. So that was a hard time. It was kind of hard, uh, kind of getting to peace with that fact that I had to go back. Um, but just a fantastic trip. Um, I'll put my pack, uh, gear in the, um, comment section for you guys to look at. Uh, I packed a light 46 liter bag. But I hope that you guys learn something about the trail or for those that are perspectives looking at it. It's a great trail. It's easy. 80 miles. Um, sounds daunting, especially if you aren't in the backpacking or through hiking uh, community. But it's really good trail. It's not hard. I'm thinking about going back in a couple of years with my dad, who's 64. Um, and I have no qualms about his capabilities to finish it. So, And there's people on the trail that are older than that. Um, but yeah, um, even if you're not thinking about doing the trek, I hope you guys get outside. Um, the more you go outside, the more you fall in love with nature, in my opinion. Um, and yeah, I mean, great exercise, great way to see the world, experience the world, be by yourself, solo hiking, solo travel. It's good to get that, that solo time to think, to, uh, kind of equally, liber equally liberate. Um, and lastly, I hope you guys are all safe. I know probably about 50 of this video will get like 50 views because that's what all my videos get from high school. Uh, but yeah, stay safe with the coronavirus. Stay inside so that we can get outside quicker. Um, and yeah, uh, I gotta go shave this mustache really quickly. Uh, the stash game. But yeah, um, peace out, guys.